Hi, this is Shad with LoveToCode.com. Welcome back to another tutorial on Java JDBC. And as you may know, we are moving along with our series on building a Swing GUI that connects to a database. So currently right now, this is video 12.2, creating the data access object. So let's get started. For this tutorial, we're going to keep using our employees table. So if you just joined us, this is the actual database schema for the table. Um, I have a SQL script that will create the table and add the sample data. You can download it from the link below. The file name is called tablesetup.sql. All right, so let's kind of just take a step back, look at the big picture, just so we know what we're working with here. Um, we're going to build a Swing GUI on the front end. We're going to make use of the employee DAO, and the DAO is going to talk to the database. So this portion of the video series, we're going to focus on the actual DAO implementation. The employee DAO is a helper class. The GUI is going to use the employee DAO for connecting to the database. So in the constructor of the employee DAO, we're going to read our properties as far as information about the database URL, user ID, and password, just so we don't hard code it. And we'll also make an actual connection to the database. We'll also have another method called getAllEmployees. So the GUI can call this to get a list of all of the employees. And we'll also provide a method called search employees, where the GUI can pass in the last name, and then we'll do a query against the database to only return employees that match that last name. Okay, so I have a file called employeeDAO.java. This class will have three main methods that we'll focus on. The first thing we'll focus on is the constructor. We'll also cover the getAllEmployees method. And we'll also discuss the search employees method. All right, so right now we have this constructor. And this constructor is basically responsible for reading the information from the properties file. And it's going to read from this file called demo.properties. That's part of our Eclipse project. And it's just a simple text file. It has name value pairs for the user ID, password, and database URL. This is a very common feature that's used in the Java world, such that we don't hard code the uh, connection information in the actual source code. So in this constructor, we have code for um, loading up the properties and then reading off the actual property information for user, password, and database URL. So once we have this information, then we can actually connect to the database. So this is using our standard driver manager get connection work uh, that we've done before. And then finally, we have just a little system out print line method that'll say, hey, we connected successfully. Now we've moved over to this next method, get all employees. So what this method is going to do is it's going to query the database and return all of the employees for us. Now we're going to make use of this class called employee. So we see that the method returns a list of employee. And what exactly is an employee? An employee, and I'll just select the link up top, uh, employee is just a very basic Java class that has information about an employee. So it has the last name, first name, email, and salary. Uh, all we have are simple getter and setter methods for it, and that's it. So it's just a regular Java class. It's really just a value object. So here, our method will return a list of the employees. So basically what we do is we start off by creating an, an empty list of employees, and then we set up our normal JDBC work. We create our statement. We execute our query, and here it's plain vanilla, right? Select star from employees, no where clause or anything. Once we get this information back, we loop through that result set. We make use of a helper method called convert row to employee. Again, it's just a helper method. You'll have the source code once you download it. It basically takes that result set and creates an employee object and returns it. Once we have that employee created, then we can add it to our list. And we keep doing that for each element in the result set. When we're all finished, we return that list. And then finally, we have uh, we close off the result set and the statement. So that's the coding now for get all employees. So let's take a look at our next method, search employees. So the GUI is going to call this to search for employees for a given last name. Again, it's going to also return a list of employees that it matches. So a similar thing here. We'll have an empty list of employees. We will take whatever last name they pass in and we'll append it with the uh, percent so we can make use of the SQL like command. Then I'll set this up as a prepared statement. Select from employees where last name like question mark. And then we'll actually set that value accordingly when they pass in that last name. Then we execute the query. And then from here, again, same thing. We simply loop through the result set, convert each uh, row to an employee, and add it to the list. And that's it. That completes the major coding for my data access object. Now what I really like to do is test it to make sure it actually works. So what I can do is make use of a simple main method that'll actually call this DAO. 
So I have this main method, and basically what I do inside of the main method is I create an instance of the DAO, and then I call a method on it. So here I call DAO search employees, and I give the name of Tom. So let me run this application and see what the output is. And as we can see, it returned one employee, last name of Thomas. So that looks pretty good. Let me try calling one more method here. And I'll do a system out print line on get all employees. I'll remove this information and I'll save this and then I'll run it one more time. And now it says uh, we got the first information for Thomas. Now we're getting the second list and the second list includes everything for all of the employees within our database. So that works out pretty good. So now we have a level of confidence that our data access object is working as desired. This wraps up the video 12.2 on creating the data access object. We're going to move to the next video 12.3 on designing the GUI. So please follow the links for the next video.